Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter. Now, let me tell you how to stay healed. I get up in the morning, and first thing I do, very first thing, I go into my bathroom, right there on my bathroom mirror, I have that scripture. I wrote it out on a little lined yellow paper and just got taped it to the, minute, to the picture, to the mirror. That verse right there. And then you go over to the eighth chapter of Matthew, and verse 14, I have it right there on the mirror. When Jesus was come into Peter's house, I want you to notice, notice not, uh, not, uh, just notice who, who he is and what he is. He came into Peter's house and saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And Luke 4.38 says, a great fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. In other words, she got up and fixed supper. Had a great fever. This wasn't anything like the flu. I'd suggest it's more like typhoid, or it's a killer fever. Great fever. Anyway, and when evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So it has been fulfilled, church. Amen. Yes. If it's been fulfilled. If it's been fulfilled, that's for all, all people for all time. That doesn't leave anybody out. I preach healing in prisons. I was in one prison. Here was a man. And the reason he was in prison, if you were black or brown, he'd kill you. He had a problem. <laughs> he had a real problem. And so I knew about him before I got there. And when I walked in, this man was seated right on the end of a row there. And there was a black man on one side and a brown man on the other side. And he had them hugged up like that. And he said, ain't this just the greatest thing you ever saw in all your life? Praise God. <laughs> I've seen healings in there. Just great things. Why? Because Jesus said it. I was in sick. I was sick and you came to me. I was in prison and you visited me. They said, when, Lord? He said, if you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. So he ministers in prison, out of prison. I baptized a serial killer in the Barrett County Jail in San Antonio, Texas. Named Stephen Moran. And I talked to him. I had quite a long uh, relationship with him. He kidnapped a woman. And she, he said, lady, I'm... I'm going to kill you if you don't shut up. 
She said, you're not going to kill the only person that ever loved you. She said, well, may I put my tape in? He said, I don't care what you do. Well, it was a tape of my tape of preaching. <laughs> if it just shut you up. They were out in the country by this time. He slammed on the brakes. He said, who said that? And he looked in the back seat. And Maggie said, what, Stephen? He said, I heard somebody say, Stephen, this is your last chance, son. He had killed 21 women. Well, anyway, he and I became good friends. And over a period of time, he, he said, I don't. He said, I, I don't want, I, I, I don't want. I, 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 want, I want to be executed. He said, I want to get out of here. He said, I don't have anything but that five-year-old boy. And he said, I don't have anything here. I, wa I want to leave. So I was there the night they executed him in Huntsville. I was with him about 30 minutes before. And I said, Stephen, uh, let me know if grace is enough. Yeah, I said, I'll do that. And where we were speaking, there's this mesh so tight. I was here looking up at him. He was in there looking down at me. So it's impossible to give anybody, you know, poison or anything like that. But anyway, we were discussing things, talking about it. And uh, yeah, he said, I, I can do that. So then went, I went upstairs and the, the room was blacked out. So he couldn't see any of the people that came there as witnesses. But I was, uh, I was so close, I was in the light. I was right, right there on the front row. I was as close as from me to you. And um, then they, I, I went upstairs and they said, and the, the warden, a spirit-filled warden, he and I are really good friends. So I had a front row seat because <laughs> he already knew about it. And so I was right up on the front, just a little railing right there. Don't ever think that that's an easy way, that lethal injection. There's a, this metal aluminum box up here that has the vials in it and so forth. And when they turn that thing loose, it makes a loud noise. Bang! You know you're going to be dead in seconds. So... Warden Harvey said, uh, Stephen, you have anything you want to say? <laughs> and he started preaching. If I'll tell you, if the Holy Ghost can do something with, the, with something like me, think what he could do for you. I mean, he started preaching and he preached and he preached and, and finally the warden said, Stephen, 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 son, we got to take care of business. Yeah, I said, I know it. I know it. So Stephen prayed, Heavenly Father, I give thanks for this time, for the time that we've been together, the fellowship in your word, the Christian family presented to me, and, and he called the names of the personal witnesses. This was March the 13th, 1985. Allow your Holy Spirit to flow as I know your love has been showered upon me. Forgive them. And now here's, he said this, forgive them. They know not what they do, as I know you have forgiven me. Now, he was in the presence of a bunch of people, people that wanted to see him die. And so that was a proper thing to pray. As I have forgiven them, Lord Jesus, I commit my soul to you. I praise you and I thank you. Glory to God. That thing went Bang! And he looked over there at me and went two thumbs up. <laughs> more than enough. More than enough. That ought to get healing going in you right. That ought to get your healing juices going right now. Glory to God. More than enough. And his body lunged like that and he was gone. One of the things I, I told him, I said, Stephen, you have long enough, brother, to become an expert on prayer. He was a brilliant man. 
That's the reason they never did catch him. He gave up. They didn't catch him. He, he, he went into a place and just got him a job as an architect. And got some, went, you know, went to the library someplace and got a bunch of books on architects and, and became a, an architect. Had a good job, but the police was kind of getting around close to him, so he left there, go somewhere else and get him another job. But see, that spirit was working with him. And, and he told me, he said, there are times, he said, I, I, I knew I could just turn around and walk out and they couldn't see me. But then after he accepted Jesus in that car that night, he told Mar 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 he, Margie, he said, and she just dropped him off in this little town and, and, uh, she said, now, Stephen, I'm not going to lie for you, son. No, no, no. He said, I don't expect you to. He said, you think Mr. Copeland would come turn me in? He said, I'd like to give my pistol to him. She said, Stephen, I have no idea how to get a hold of him. <laughs> well, he said, I want him to baptize me. And so I did. And they set that tub out there. And, you know, you stand on the side here in Bama, and I'm telling you, those officers had their hands on their pistols when they brought him in there. They were so afraid of him. And I baptized him in water, and I'm telling you, he came up out of there. You could just see it all over his face. He just was beaming. He just, oh, God, he was just so thrilled. But see, he didn't kill anybody. That is that old man. I dare say there were people watching him die that are guilty of murder because they wanted him dead. They wanted to see him dead. Isn't the gospel just absolutely fabulous? Yes. And here we are this morning, the same Jesus. I don't know who you are that are watching, but listen, you know, the scripture says that, well, let's turn to the 107th Psalm. Psalms 107. Psalm 107. The 17th verse, fools because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhors all manner of meat, then they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. There are a lot of people that because of their lifestyle, they're sick. And you don't have to be wicked to be that way. Heart trouble, cancer, Most of that is related to the way we live. The trouble I had with my heart was, a, was related to the way I ate like a pig and didn't take care of myself. Well, and I disobeyed God. How did I disobey God? Way back there in the beginning, I heard this, start walking and don't quit. I did it for a little while and I quit. Now, that is disobedience and bad things happen to good people because good people make bad choices. <laughs> Had I obeyed him, it's a known fact. If you'll go take a walk for one hour a day you, uh, and do it every day, you can add 25 years to your life. But I didn't do that. I had a better idea, and it liked to got me killed. <laughs> but thank God, he forgave me for it. Amen. 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 And he fixed me. <laughs> but faith demands corresponding action. That's a fundamental of faith. 
And this morning, when we pray the prayer of faith, I mean, you do something you couldn't do. You get into action. If you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't see, see. If you, if you can't stand up, stand up on the inside. And one of the things, you know, when as often as you do this, I take communion uh, a lot. And do it in remembrance of me. That means I remember things. I remember things. I remember in the invalid tent with Oral Roberts. There was this, this young girl. She was about nine years old. And her, her family, you can tell, they, they were not, they, they, were, uh, they were not well off financially because the wheelchair was old <laughs> and kind of beat up. And she was paralyzed. And in his message that night, Brother Roberts had said, you get into action. If you can't move anything but one little finger, move it. And it'll go all over the rest of your body. And they had a, 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 a tube of 12 just kind of bailing wired to that. <laughs> if she had a the tube of 12 was bailing wired to the wheelchair. And then she was on that board and she's stiff like this. And um, had a strap over her like this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I said that again to them, and she just started rolling her eyes. That's all she could move. In a little bit, she said, Mama, Mama, get, take, get that strap off. I'm healed. Her mama said, oh, baby, she, Mama, Mama, get me loose. I'm healed. I'm telling you, I'm healed. I'm healed. She took that strap off, and I want you to know that little girl bounded off that board, and she took off around that tent just yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, she, she just flew off that board. It started with her eyes, and it just went all over her. She was completely paralyzed. I didn't know why, but she was just completely paralyzed. She just bounded off of that board. Amen. 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 Because she got into action. Amen. Amen. So now, let's go to Mark chapter 5. A day in the life of Jesus. Now, they came over the other side of the sea, country of the Gadarenes. Now, you know the story here. Here was a man. He was come out of the ship. Immediately there met him a man out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, one unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? Now, I've had dealings with these devils. And they, their voice is anything but normal. Now, you notice the Apostle Paul said concerning the devil in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in the heavenlies. That ruler of the darkness in this world, those are the ones that possess a man or a woman. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. Well, now we know what was happening here. And he asked him what his name is, and he said, My name is Legion, for we are many and besought him much that he would not send him away out of that country. Now there was there nine to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine. Now the people heard what that man said. 
to Jesus. They didn't hear this, but Jesus did. All the devils. Here's the deal. That was a boss devil. A ruler of the darkness of this world. Jesus called him unclean spirit. He possessed this man completely. And then, and we, and we know what happened. So, but I wanted you to see this. Verse 15, they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the, the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were afraid. Now I want to ask you this, where did they get those clothes? You know he didn't turn around. <laughs> he didn't turn around to the other guys and say, take your clothes off. No, we wouldn't have noticed. He would have had a problem, wouldn't he? Huh? That's corresponding action in advance. Jesus must have given instructions. I'm going to call this man to preach. He's skin and bones. He looks bad, but I'm going to deliver him and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him back home to his friends, and I don't want him going home looking bad. I want him looking good. I want you to get him a couple of new suits. Glory to God. I'm calling him to preach, and he ought to look good. So this is corresponding action in advance. Amen. <laughs> Planning for him. Planning for him. Like a woman that, that planned for her son to be released from prison. And she set a table for him every morning for breakfast. And she's believing God. And she would have a conversation with him. Well, what's, what's she doing? Same thing. Only she would get through when she washed her dishes, she washed his. And not all that long, he came home saved and full of the Spirit and called to preach. Amen. Faith has its actions, but it takes action to receive it. Put it into action by releasing it. My name is Gabe, and I live now in Fort Worth, Texas. While I was in high school, I just started sensing the calling of God on my life to preach the gospel and to, to impact my generation and influence those around me. And I just had this sense in my heart, four-year university is not where I'm supposed to be. But um, it wasn't until KCBC was launched that I, I didn't really know I wanted to go to Bible school. But then when KCBC was launched, I knew immediately, I was like, this is the place I'm going to be. It was so good. Every single day, every class was just so full of the Word of God. And spiritually especially, it was such a focused school. It was like, I, I, think, I think of it like a gym, and we just got stronger every single day. When COVID hit, I knew that a lot of people would be on their phones, and a lot of people in my generation especially. And I knew that in order to reach them, I needed to go out to where they are. And so I just started up social media, started making videos, preaching the gospel. I would have my phone and I would run up to the phone and, and tell people about the love of God and salvation. Yeah, I just started up and to this day it, it has grown even more and a lot, of, a lot of souls have been reached. On October 25th, I was riding an electric skateboard, which basically is like normal skateboard, just goes pretty fast, 20 miles per hour. And um, I was riding with my friend and I hit a bump in the middle of the road and flipped off the skateboard and then landed directly on my head. Um, immediately started going out of consciousness <clears throat> and um, started actually my lung failed and I started throwing up into my lung um, and I almost died right there um, if it wasn't for my friend John Michael, John Michael Howell. Um, he helped prop me up and he, he saved my life. Got an ambulance there and then um, for the next around two weeks I was in a coma. I was also put on a ventilator for breathing and the news that the hospital had shared was that I had a 50-50 chance of even living. Um, they said even if I came back that I probably wouldn't have a personality or memory. But thank God for the people praying in faith here and joined in agreement. Um, and uh, on November 15th, 
I was starting to wake up for a couple days, but one night I went to bed and when I woke up, my memory came back, my personality came back. And so when I finally fully woke up from the coma, I, I almost didn't even experience any pain. Um, it was, it was, I was like, what am I doing in a hospital? It really is, is God's grace, but also people praying in faith and also my spirit man was full of joy and faith because of what I've learned here and because of this community here. I, I wasn't doubting, I wasn't depressed. Even when I came back, they were, the hospital was telling me words like, you know, you could never return to the life you had. You, you might always struggle with mental issues. You might, your body might re never really be the same. But as I heard those words, I, I knew in my spirit, man, no, Jesus has healed me. By his stripes, I am healed. And so I was just full of confidence and I was actually laughing. Uh, I was full of joy. I was like, I'm not worried about this at all. You know, God just saved me from death. I'm not worried about <laughs> problems you think I could have in the future. I'm very thankful for Brother Copeland and KCM. This, this ministry has a heart to bring the word of faith to the next generation. And um, I'm so thankful for that. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now and s spreading the word to the next generation if it wasn't for here. And I'm very grateful that they, they would honor and care about this next generation. It, it means a lot. I'm very thankful. Hello, I'm Dwayne Munoz, Associate Dean of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you. It's an audio series by Miss Gloria called Healing School. This is a powerful teaching about the healing power of God's Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You need to get a copy of this and build your faith. Whether you're believing for healing or you're already healed, this will help strengthen your inner man to receive God's promises. Let the Word get down into your heart and change the way you think, speak, and live. This is a great one to get for your faith library. To request your free series on MP3 disc or to download it today, go to kcm.org. If you need prayer, Kenneth Copeland Ministries has a prayer line that you can call. We have licensed prayer ministers on staff who are trained in the Word of God to pray in faith with you. It matters how you pray. Romans 4.17 says, Faith calls things that be not as though they were. As Brother Copeland says, Pray the answer, not the problem. So whatever you're believing God for, healing, wisdom, or finances, go to God's Word. Make that final authority and stand on those covenant promises. KCM has prayer ministers in all of their offices around the world. To contact one of these nearest you, go to kcm.org for their information. Tomorrow, Brother Copeland teaches you how to plug into faith for your healing. This is Dwayne Munoz reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.uk.